we're asked to write an augmented matrix for the system of equations and then use it to solve the system. If the system has an infinite number of solutions, we want to express them in terms of the parameter z. So because we have a system of three equations with three unknowns, we'll have a three by four augmented matrix. So looking at the first equation, the first row of the matrix will be negative six, positive 15, 60, and negative 18. Looking at the second equation, the second row would be negative two, one, 12, negative six. Looking at the third equation, the third row would be one, negative three, negative 11, and positive three. And now we're going to write this in reduced row echelon form in order to determine the solution to the system. For a quick review, we must meet these four conditions for the matrix to be in reduced row echelon form. Number one, the first non-zero element in each row called the leading entry is one. Two, each leading entry is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the previous row. Three, rows with all zero elements, if any, are below rows having a non-zero element. And finally, four, in each column that contains a leading entry or a one, all other elements of the column are zeros. So because we have a three by four augmented matrix, here are three examples of three by four matrices in reduced row echelon form. Here we have an example of one solution. Here we have an example of no solution because we have three zeros and a one in the last row. And here's an example of infinite solutions where we have an entire row of zeros. So now we want to perform row operations to write this in reduced row echelon form. Let's first obtain a zero in this position. Notice how negative three times negative two is positive six. If we add that to negative six, we'd get zero. So we'll replace row two with negative three times row two plus row one. Let's also obtain a zero in this position. Notice two times one plus negative two is zero. So we'll replace row three with two times row three plus row two. So the first row will stay the same. Now we'll replace row two with negative three times row two plus row one. So negative three times negative two plus negative six equals zero. Negative three times one plus 15 is 12. Negative three times 12 plus 60 is 24. And negative three times negative six is 18 plus negative 18 is zero. Now we'll replace row three with two times row three plus row two. So two times one plus negative two is zero. Two times negative three plus one is negative five. Two times negative 11 plus 12 is negative 10. And two times three plus negative six is zero. Let's continue on the next slide. Now for the next step, let's simplify the rows. Notice the greatest common factor of all the elements in row one is three. So let's replace row one with negative one-third times row one. Notice the elements in row two have a greatest common factor of 12. Let's replace row two with one-twelfth times row two. And the greatest common factor of the elements in row three would be five. Let's replace row three with negative one-fifth times row three. Negative one-third times row one would be two, negative five, negative 20 and six. One twelve times row two would be zero, one, two, zero. And negative one fifth times row three would be zero, one, two, zero. Now let's obtain a zero in this position by using row two. Notice five times one plus negative five would be zero. So let's replace row one with five times row two plus row one. Notice row two and row three are the same, so we can get all zeros in row three if we replace row three with negative one times row two plus row three. So for row one, we'll have five times zero plus two, that's two. Five times one plus negative five, that's zero. And we have five times two, which is 10, plus negative 20, that's negative 10. And five times zero plus six is six. Second row stays the same. 
And now for row three, we have negative one times row two plus row three. So negative one times zero plus zero is zero. Negative one times one plus one is zero. Negative one times two plus two is zero. And negative one times zero plus zero is zero. Now we almost have this in reduced row echelon form except for this first row. We need this element here to be one. So let's replace row one with one half times row one. So one half times row one is going to be one, zero, negative five, three. Row two and three will stay the same. Because we have a row of zeros, we have an infinite number of solutions. If we go back to our directions, it does say if we have an infinite number of solutions, express them in terms of the parameter z. Again, this row tells us we have infinite number of solutions. The second row would give us the equation one y plus two z equals zero, or y plus two z equals zero. The first row gives us the equation x minus five z equals three. So again, we know we have infinite solutions, which we are asked to express using the parameter z. So let's go ahead and let z equal z, and notice that y would be equal to negative two z if we subtract two z on both sides. And notice x would be equal to three plus five z. So here we have our infinite solutions expressed using the parameter z. I hope you found this helpful.